In this video, we're going to make a Farcaster frame using trusted and signed frame data. And we're also going to be able to get things like their Farcaster user ID, their profile picture, and things like how many followers that they have. And we can put that all into our frame. For this demo, I'm going to use frog.fm. It's my favorite framework for making Farcaster frames. It makes things very simple. So we go to frog.fm and we go to get started. And I'm just going to start a brand new project. And I'm going to pick the Vercel flavor. So what you'll do is copy this, the init frog, and you open up a terminal window. And then I'm just going to call it frog verified. Okay, then you go to CD frog verified. And then you want to npm install all the goodies inside of there. Now in my previous videos, I've used Next.js, but you don't actually need all the Next.js stuff since a frame is basically just a backend. So I'm just gonna pick the Vercel flavor of it. All right, once everything installed, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get an API folder with an index.tsx. Inside, they kind of have a little starter frame for you and we can run it to see what we get. So you wanna do npm run dev and it's gonna have this API here. So now Frog also has a cool little dev tools that we'll want to install. Set up the dev tools. We we'll want to import dev tools up at the top. Copy this part down here. I'm just going to have the dev tools on all the time. Now, if we start it again with npm dev. You can see that there's a dev little thing here. If we click on that. So this is the frame and you can pick oranges and it's gonna say oranges, you can pick bananas. So right now all this stuff is untrusted data. Okay, so let's go back to the Farcaster frame spec right here. And if you read through this, there's they talk about um, how every action that happens on a Farcaster frame, there will be a signature attached to it. And that is, if you're doing like sensitive stuff, you'll always want to use the signature verified message instead of the untrusted message. So there's untrusted data right here, and then there's the trusted data right here. We're going to want to use this trusted data. And with Frog, like I mentioned before, it's very easy to get that trusted data. So if you go to their docs, the securing frames, they have kind of all of it hooked up. You just need to activate a hub. So a Farcaster hub. You just need to activate a Farcaster hub in the Frog instance. So if we can go over here. So right here they have a Nanar hub. And then I like to use the Pinata hub actually because you don't need an API key or anything and it's completely free. So we're gonna add a hub right now. And it's gonna be the Pinata hub. So as soon as you activate this hub, your local environment is probably gonna not work if you're trying to get the verified information because you don't have a Farcaster account hooked up to it. So this is gonna start acting very weird. See, when you try to interact with it, it's going to say invalid signer because this is localhost. We don't have our Farcaster user hooked up to it. There is a way to sign in with Farcaster over here. Um, there's a little icon you can click on, but I cannot get this to work. So if anybody has gotten this to work, please leave a comment down below on how you got it to work because I tried this. I paid the warps and it wasn't really working for me, so I had to find an alternative solution. So the alternative solution I got to testing this locally was to use ngrok. Now ngrok is going to take your local server and kind of put it up into the internet. And then you can use that local server, your local host, directly in the Warpcaster frame validator. So what you want to do is get set up with ngrok, it's free. You can sign up, get an account. I know it's a little bit of a pain, but this is what's worked best for me so far. So once you have ngrok set up, what you wanna do is open up a new tab. You wanna do ngrok HTTP and then your local server. In my case, it's localhost 5179 because that is what my frame API is at. So if I delete all this stuff, this is actually my real frame API. So I'm going to do ngrok that, 
and it's going to take my local server, so this console, and it's going to put it up on the internet uh, at an address. So it's going to be a bunch of gibberish, and it's a free plan, and then you can actually visit this URL once it's done. So what you'll want to do is visit this first, and you're going to get this like little splash screen, and you want to hit visit site and then it'll start to work. So if you go here, it's not working. That's because we are under the slash API. So if you go to slash API, you can see that it's actually the same thing as my local host. And now if I copy this and I go into the Warpcast frame validator, it's actually going to start to work. And it should give me that welcome oranges bananas thing. See, now it starts to work. Now if I come in and click on this, I'm signed in with my Farcaster account. So now this is starting to work when I have a hub hooked up. Now, there's some cool stuff we can see. So once you have the hub hooked up, you can see a frame data. And then there's also a is verified, verified, okay. So we can just start console logging these things. So when we do console.log verified, and let's also look at what frame data is. Now remember, frame data and verified only happens when you have this hub hooked up. So I'm gonna save it. And now I'm going to go into my local, and you can see that it's starting to console log here. So let's see what happens. When I first load this, on the first load, everything's gonna be false, okay? Let me uh, resize the screen a little bit. All right, so on the first load, everything is gonna be false. But as soon as I start interacting, you're gonna see that it's going to do some stuff. And it might take a while since we're going through NGROC and we're coming to the internet, coming to our computer. That's why it may lag a little bit. Usually it's pretty fast. But now you can see that verified is true and we have frame data in here. So the stuff in frame data is the verified signed message. And it's gonna give you things like the Farcaster user ID and then the button and stuff like that. So now we have all that working, we can do something like pull off the Farcaster user ID. So we want to do something like this. Uh, FID off of frame data and let's console.log it here. FID. FID. Give me a warning saying it does not exist. So sometimes you'll want to do that to fix the TypeScript because frame data could be like nothing if you're not signed in. So you want to have like a safe fallback and then now that will make the TypeScript all happy. So now we're console logging the Farcaster ID. So let's get our consoles back up. Everything's undefined. I'm gonna click on oranges again. And now that was a little faster this time. So now we can print the Farcaster ID onto the frame. So we'll do a FID and you wanna do it to string. Otherwise, I think it's gonna break it. We're going to print it to the frame. All right, so now let's do oranges again. Now instead of oranges, it should give me my Farcaster ID. And as you can see, it's all nicely hooked up. Uh, even though we're using the Warpcast frame validator, we are able to locally develop as well. And it's a pretty fast feedback loop. Okay, so we have our Farcaster ID. Now we can do some other cool things. And to do that, we're going to look at middleware. So if you go back to the frog documentation, this is kind of a little bit hidden, but they have what's called middleware. And it lets you get extra data from all the requests that you get. And one of the nice things they have is they have a built-in middleware for Nanar. So what Nanar is, it's like a bunch of APIs to help you get more data from a Farcaster frame and from the Farcaster user who's interacting with your frame. It does cost money, but Frog offers a API key for development purposes. I would not recommend using this in a production level environment because you're probably gonna get rate limited. This is just to test it and play things out. So now what we're gonna do is add this middleware. So we're gonna import the Nanar from frog middleware right there. And then it's very, very easy to use. And you can see you just do dot use and then you put in the middleware right here. So right after you make that new frog, 
you want to put in the dot new and this is where your API key would go. I'm just going to use this. If you do get a new API key, make sure you put this in like an environment variable because you don't want to expose this to GitHub or anything like that. All right, so that is basically it. And once you have that middleware hooked up, you're going to get some more interesting things coming from this context here. So as you can see, we can get things like the display name and the follower account from c.var.interactor. Okay, so let us copy this part and paste it down into here. Delete these console logs. Now we're going to do display name and the follower account. So we're just going to log those to our console right now. So upon the initial visit, everything's going to be undefined. Only once the user interacts with your frames, that's when they, that data comes in. So right now it's going through Nanar, that middleware. It still has my Farcaster ID, and you can see my display name and my follower account right here. Now another thing, I think you can get like PFP, PFP URL. So this is the URL of your profile picture. So let's actually make a new route so this one doesn't get so confusing. We can kind of clean it up a little bit. Don't really need all these extra buttons. All right, so to make a new route using frog, we're going to copy and paste down here. All right, so I'm going to make a new route called Nanar, and then this one can have action equals Nanar, and we don't really need a value here. So we're going to change that button to hit this route, and I kind of copied over all the Nanar interactor stuff from up here, put it down here, and we're going to print an image with some styles, and it's going to say greeting display name, and then you have a follower account, and then right in the here you can just put an image and for the source, you can put that PFP URL, and it should make a nice little image here. So let's test that out. And if I do apples, it's going to give me that old one. Now if I hit Nanar now, it's going to hit this new route, and it should give me some more stuff. And then see how my, it has my picture in there now. That's pretty cool. And then this is actually a picture in and of self. So if I open this, Remember, uh, in Farcaster frames, they're all just OG images. So this is actually a, a picture. So I'm putting my profile picture inside of a picture right now. Now, if you don't want to use Nanar and if you don't want to pay for it, I understand. You can do probably your own middleware. This isn't something I've done yet, but the data on Farcaster is open and available for anybody. So you could theoretically come in here and make your own middleware and they have an example on how to do that. And instead of using Nanar, you can just use like the Farcaster Hub API, and you can kind of get your own data based off of that Farcaster ID. So the Farcaster ID, you don't need any API keys to get that part of that signed uh, and verified message. So you could come to something like Pinata. Remember the hub we used was from Pinata. So that hub, you can use it to get more information. You can kind of get like information using just uh, like a fetch request. So you want to make a custom middleware and you want to add all this stuff into the fetch request and you can get additional data based on the Farcaster user ID. Now that's probably going to be a bunch of work to get it all set up, which is why Nanar and other services exist because even though you have to pay for it, it makes things a lot easier. If you found this video to be useful, please give it a like, a thumbs up, and a subscribe to the channel. Thanks.